65 year old male with a left knee pain and deformity and he has difficulty in walking and uh, doing his daily activities this was uh, his uh, gait probably it won't play I think there is some so issue with uh, the video, Sandeep. Just more on. algas on the left side. Sorry, I didn't get it. Yeah, Sandeep, the video is the issue because the some two speakers also had the same issue. So just yeah. move on. Yeah. We, we understand. Yeah. So. <clears throat> On examination, this was a group of valgus deformity with 20 degree of valgus, which was partially correctable. There was no ligament laxity. Uh, he is not a known case of rheumatoid, and the neurological known component was also excluded by examination. Now, this is a scanogram. The tibiofemoral angle is up to 20 degree, and uh, this was a partially correctable. Now, uh, before going uh, uh, to the, uh, the result, I cover briefly cover the basic principles of uh, valgus knee correction. Ranawat uh, et al has uh, uh, classified valgus knee into three types depending upon the femorotibial angle and the intactness uh, of the medial collateral ligament. The components of valgus deformity are only component and soft tissue component. The only component involves uh, hypoplastic lateral femoral condyle, uh, which is both in uh, coronal and sagittal planes. Giving the valgus and external rotation deformity. In very severe cases, there is, there is metaphyseal uh, uh, in the tibia, leading to tibia valga and extra articular deformity. Now, these are the tight structures on the concave or lateral side of the knee, starting from the iliotibial band, the posterior capsule, lateral collateral ligament, popliteal, and in severe cases, the muscular components of gastrocnemius and lateral functions. Now, during uh, addressing this, uh, cases for total knee replacement, we have to address both bony and soft tissue deformant, uh, deformant forces simultaneously. So, for bony correction, you know, the coronal al alignment should be uh, perfect. The valgus correction angle in these cases are generally taken as, as, as 3 to 5 degrees, but this de depends upon the uh, uh, femoral neck shaft angle. Now the, the major culprit here is the hypoplastic lateral femoral condyle. So while doing the femoral sizing, there is a tendency of putting the femoral component in internal rotation and that can lead to patellofemoral femoral problems. So the other references are taken into consideration like wide side spine, the trans axis and the proximal cut surface of the tibia. If we take all these three in consideration, then the margin of error in femoral rotation are less and the complications are less. If you are taking the posterior condyle as a reference, then the external rotation is to be compensated more by 2 degrees. So total external rotation will be 5 degrees due to hypoplastic lateral femoral condyle. So the, the, the line joining these two pins, the, uh, the trial component, should be parallel to the trans condyle line. And we have to achieve the uh, symmetric and rectangular flexion gap after taking the uh, posterior femoral cut. Can be again confirmed with the parallelity with the cut surface of the uh, proximal tibia. If the flexion gap is more than the extension gap, then upsizing of the femoral component to increase the posterior condylar oxidation to achieve the balanced uh, flexion gap. The commonest situation in valgus knee is trapezoidal uh, extension gap with tightness on the lateral side and uh, uh, looseness on the medial side. In grade 2 deformities where MCL is intact. Uh, Insal has uh, uh, given uh, extensive lateral release uh, in his literature, uh, beginning from iliotibial band, the lateral collateral ligament, the popliteal tendon, lateral retinaculum, and uh, as high as in lateral intermuscular septum. But in these cases of uh, severe uh, uh, lateral release, there can be a possibility of postlateral instability of the tibial component, where constant prosthesis. Uh, need to be there to get out of the situation. Now, Ranawat et al. has uh, developed a, a systematic methodical instead of release approach for this uh, lesser de degree of deformities of type 2, where he recommends iliotibial band release 
in the form of pipe resting and release of the posterior uh, posterior lateral capsule at the level of uh, joint line. So with the lamina spreader in situ and knee incomplete extension, the IT band pipe resting and posterior capsule pipe resting is done. The release of lateral collateral and popliteus ligaments is very rarely required in these grade two deformities because popliteus is the main stabilizer of the posterior part of the knee. Mulaji et al. has developed this uh, method of lateral uh, epicondylar osteotomy to correct the flexion and extension gap and fixing with the meter cancerous screw. Now, all these procedures have risk of uh, peroneal nerve injury during the postulator release. So, there is this uh, triangle which is uh, bordered by posterior uh, border of IT band, the popliteal stain, and, and, and the proximal perceptors of the tibia. If you do not go in this area, the chances of injury to the uh, peroneal nerve are very less. Historically, there are different methods of release by white side uh, in the form of sequential release and lateral capsular uh, approach by Keblish et al. and uh, medial imbrication as uh, stated by Krakow. These all methods were uh, historical nowadays very uh, less frequently used. If the, the gap of flexion and extension are very severe and there is MCL deficiency, then uh, constant implants have to be there uh, as a standard. Now, a few words about uh, patellar tracking. The patellar tracking can be improved by lateralization of the femoral component. The box cut should be uh, lateralized. For this, you, we need to use the uh, posterior uh, to shift sacrificing implant so that we can adjust the box cut medial or lateral and uh, medialize the patellar component so that it fits perfectly on the trochlea and uh, there are least chances of uh, patellar dislocation. Even if after doing all this, if there is a particular mal tracking, then uh, this outside in technique described by uh, Maniac is very handy where you can cut only the retinaculum and the uh, inner uh, sinuel uh, there is intact covering the implant. In larger TPL defects, uh, the augments and the extension rods are always uh, preferable. Now, in our case, this was a type 2 vulgus with uh, intact MCL and uh, partially correctable lateral side. So uh, under anesthesia, the uh, correction was partial, uh, partially uh, correctable valgus. So we had an approach of medial parabrated uh, arthrotomy with minimal medial resection and laterally uh, complete excision of lateral meniscus, osteophytes, and PCL was done. On knee dislocation, the lateral femoral condyle was hypoplastic as expected with contained uh, tibial defect. So the proximal tibial cut was taken perpendicular to the mechanical axis of the tibia. The slope given was 4 degrees that depends upon the implant uh, company which we are uh, using. The valgus correction angle in this case was, was 5 degrees with uh, distal femoral cut around 6 mm. And this la lateral condyle didn't uh, cut much. Now again, following uh, the basic principle of gap balancing, the tighter lateral structures in this asymmetric extension gap were released by in the form of iliotibial band pipe resting with 11 number of 15 number of blades. And uh, there was minimal need of uh, postulateral capsular release in our case. So that's the pictorial presentation. So after achieving this com uh, completely symmetric and uh, uh, balanced extension gap, which was equal to the flexion gap, the flexion uh, gap uh, was run with reference to these uh, three uh, uh, lines, the white set line, the tricolor axis, and the proximal cut surface for the tibia. So the flexion gap was uh, completely rectangular, which was confirmed with the proximal cut surface of the tibia. Now here, the tibial defect was small uh, to 5 mm after cutting the uh, proximal tibia. Sandeep, can yes, you sir? surprise? Because uh, we yes, have this is the presentation. Right, right. So this was a post-operative X-ray. Uh, this is now uh, three years follow-up, and uh, the post-operative range of motion is up to 110 degrees. The patient is walking comfortably. The second case is uh, is of same uh, uh, variety. Uh,